Hey guys, Lucas Garvey here. Today, I want to discuss the emergence of the superhero genre in Hollywood. It's a huge success, with practically every big film each year being based off of a comic book. Now, I'm not going to discuss whether it's a good or bad thing. I'm purely going to focus on what could have been the catalyst for it. Today, we live in a studio-heavy Hollywood. Giant budgets for giant franchises. This is nothing new. The film industry is always jumping back and forth between studios running it and it being artist-centric. The current era, which is revolved around comic book movies and film universes, is actually very reminiscent of the 40s and 50s. Back then, the popular cinematic universe was the Universal Monster Movies. First, you had Frankenstein Dracula, which I should add, are both based off of books. Then eventually, you had Frankenstein meets the Wolfman and similar crossover movies. Very similar to how the Marvel movies started with Iron Man and Captain America, eventually culminating in the Avengers. So what causes the studio-centric movie crossover style that's so popular today and was so popular in the 40s and 50s? Well, it's all related to spectacle. The studios want to make films that are completely full of spectacle because it's the best way to try to intrigue the populace. The spectacle in the 40s and 50s was driven by monster movies and musicals. Monster films requiring an exorbitant amount of special effects and technical prowess to pull off, and musicals require a huge amount of choreography and timing, which took a huge amount of time to get down perfectly. So if that was the spectacle of the 40s and 50s, then what's the spectacle of today? Well, I think musicals and monster movies merged together to create the action movies of the 80s. The choreography once found in musicals became the choreography of fight scenes. The costumes and special effects of monster movies became the guns and explosions of action films. The action movie trend took a bit of a break in the 90s to make room for a more artist-centric Hollywood. Lower budget films took the spotlight, so there was less of an emphasis on spectacle. But then with the exponential growth of computer power and the emergence of CGI, the action genre came back to the center stage stronger than ever. Films that would have previously been virtually impossible to make now became feasible. Superhero movies are an obvious example. It was now possible to show a man swing from building to building from a thin string of web. From that, it's history. They made Spider-Man, then Iron Man, then Avengers, etc. So I think the next question is, what's next? Are they going to be making Marvel movies for the rest of eternity? Are the 20s going to be a new and exciting artist-centric decade? Or more of the studio style? Well, it's obviously hard to say. With the Universal Monster movies, audiences slowly just started losing interest. Couple that with the French New Wave in the 60s, inspiring directors in America to try something different, along with the development of the MPAA, which allowed the release of more mature films such as The Graduate. It seems like Marvel is more popular than ever. Black Panther got nominated for Best Picture, so I don't think it'll lose steam anytime soon. However, it seems that Marvel is the only studio that can pull off the multi-film crossover universe style. So maybe other studios will give up on making a cinematic universe and try something different. Or maybe with the emergence of the internet and how cheap film equipment is today, artists will flock to the internet and make their personal and passionate films there. And Hollywood will stay Hollywood. And there will be no need to be flopping back and forth between the studio style and the artist style. It's hard to say, but I'm pretty optimistic for the 20s. I think it'll be pretty hot. That's pretty much all I wanted to say about that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give a like. For more videos like this every week, make sure to click subscribe and click the bell button to stay notified. Also, before I go, I just want to let you guys know that I do a podcast with my good friend to cut up Perez. The podcast is called The Trash Eye Podcast. I'll leave a clip from the podcast at the end of this video. I'll also leave a link in the description for you guys to check out. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and enjoy the clip. It's honestly kind of like, cra it's, it, it, it's, it's a new thing. And that's the most difficult thing yeah. about because it's so new. And I think that know? has a lot to do with the topic of our discussion and success. And I think it also, it can really mm -hmm. distract from goals and real life things mm -hmm. in a way. No, yeah. Well, actually, I was just talking to my dad about that. And just like a week ago, he's like, yeah, I got rid of Twitter, got rid of Facebook, got rid of Instagram because he just felt like, it was such a purely negative thing on him, mm -hmm. you know? And obviously, everyone's going to have their own interpretation of it. Well, you know? and it can be, too. It's like you see all these really pretty edited people, and you're like, is this how I'm supposed to be? Mm -hmm. 
I don't know, you know, but mm -hmm. there's another side of it too. It's, it's so good for business mm -hmm. and it's so good yeah. to promote yourself. Like I just made my mom an Instagram account because I'm like, she's a personal trainer. Oh, like, mom, yeah, you, you need dude. to get out there. Yeah, like you need mm -hmm. to put it on there so people can see you and be like, okay, I want to train with her. I want to go there. So it definitely is such a great platform for so many things mm -hmm. but i think it can also have this negative effect on people and really draw them away from their goals that they had before you mm -hmm. know it's like well now i want to be an instagram model but you're so smart mm -hmm. and you could help so many people with your talent that you got that mm -hmm. you have yeah so i think the other issue too is you can't escape it you know i feel like you know like, let's say like you know 20 years ago it's like oh i'm gonna buy an ad in the newspaper you know the newspaper mm -hmm. wasn't in your pocket 24 7 always giving you this notifications and things whereas now it's like Oh, someone just followed you. Oh, someone added a comment. And whether it's positive or negative, who knows? It's just like, mm -hmm. I think the fact that it's always on your person 24-7 really makes it difficult to sort of separate it from your own personal real life and then mm -hmm. the actual and social world. let's just talk about how much time you can You can literally oh, yeah. do that for an hour and you're like, I was just what? on this app for an hour. Mm -hmm. It just goes by so quick. At least that's all I do. No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. 